Hello and welcome to Just Tech Talk. In this channel, I talk about different tutorials, walkthroughs, installation videos, troubleshooting videos. I do reviews of some products and unboxing of the products. If you are new to this channel, just click on subscribe and turn notifications on so that you get the notification about all new videos. So today we are going to look at mover transfer installation process. Mover transfer for the people who do not know what it is. It's a secure file transfer product by Progress. Progress has other port product as well in their portfolio, but today our focus would be on mover transfer. Um, you can get the trial version of mover transfer from their website. Uh, so you just need to go to Progress dot com slash move it slash free hyphen trials and you'll be able to get the free download from here for 30 days for documentation you can go to docs.progress.com and under that you see there are multiple products over here but you can go into view more and you can see in move it we have move it transfer automation and gateway but we are going to focus on move it transfer today you can see the documentations available over here. You can look at all the release notes and related information of this. One thing which you should definitely have a look at as system requirements, because if you do not meet the system requirements, you will face challenges. So even during the installation, if you do not meet the system requirements, move it transfer installation will pop up the message for you. Uh, one thing which is important over here to note is the supported operating systems and databases are listed over here. The uh, operating system should be latest uh, with latest patches and so as your database. Database should have the latest cumulative updates or any related latest updates for whatever you are using. You, you should not use MySQL for any production environment, I definitely would not recommend it. It's always better to go with Move It uh, Transfer and MS SQL Database Server or Azure Database Server. Even if you are doing it for testing purpose, trial, I would suggest rather than using MySQL, which is built in as uh, the uh, built in in the installer, you should go with MS SQL Express. But if you have a bigger environment, definitely standard or enterprise edition is recommended. Express is only suitable for trial and POCs and these kind of purposes. So if you have trial version or if you have license version, for license version, you can go to community.progress.com, log into your portal and download your version from their installer files. And then once you have your installer over here, you can run it as administrator. So first thing what it will do, it will extract the files, uh, set of files in the temporary folder. And then after that, it will uh, give you the wizard for the installation. Pretty simple, installation is not very complicated. It's very simple, but let's look at the installation process. There are few languages available. You have English, French, German, and Japanese, but for sure for me, I would go with English. So once you run it, you can go with Express Edition, which will have a lot of things automatically selected, but I always prefer to go with Customs so that I have control on what I am choosing. And also I need to connect it to my DB server, so that's why I'm going to use Custom over here. So of course I'll be hiding my product key, but you will be able to see the product key over here. Now you have possibility to activate it online or using a license file. While downloading the setup from your portal, you can use active activation. Uh, you can download the activation file from there and you can make use of it, which in my case I would be use, using. You can also use offline activation, so it will generate a key file. Uh, I'll just show you. You can generate a key file basically over here and then just go to this URL and get your license file from there. But in my case, as I said, I am not going to use this. 
I am going to use the file activation so I don't need to depend on anything else. So it says that the option to activate an existing license file is selected. A specified license key, which is my serial number, I am, I'm going to hide it, will be discarded. So I'm good with it. I'll say yes, and I'm going to choose my license file from my downloads. So this will automatically activate my server. On this page, it is going to ask me uh, about the product, what I, I'm trying to install, and I'm going to click on next over here. Then it will do the system checks basically. Prerequisite checks if there is anything missing like .NET Framework or hardware is not meeting the required specs, you will be warned over here. Even if your machine needs a restart, uh, it will be uh, thrown over here and you will not be able to continue till you restart. Uh, one thing you, you have to notice is I have four processors but because four sockets for virtual processor that's why it is throwing me error on the processor part but otherwise if you have your processors uh, as per the requirement it show, it won't throw an error it's not an error it's a warning but you should pay attention to these things now go next um, rather than mysql or uh, existing uh, microsoft azure sql server i'm going to use mysql server which is installed already so in my environment i have installed a development edition because it's a lab i'm not using it in production so i have a development edition of developer edition of uh, ms sql already installed so i'm going to connect it to that server itself during the installation process uh, basically it would create an account which it is going to use for uh, read and write operation on the specific database you would need sql server login uh, windows authentication doesn't work over here so you need to have sql authentication and this user which you are using should have sysadmin because it is going to create a user and it is going to create a database for you as well so in over here in here uh, we are going to basically put our database details yeah so if you see over here it is going to create a move it transfer by the way the credentials which you have provided is only for installation purpose uh, later it will create an account move it transfer account and it is going to use it later on if you do not want to use uh, that account you can rename you can create your own account and give them the respective rights which are needed for this but for the installation purpose it is going to create an account and a database see it is going to create this account move it transfer with this password i'm going to keep it default but you can set up your password because uh, that is something uh, give you control on what you keep as a password at the end of the installation process, before uh, basically starting the installation, it will allow us to save the credentials file as well, which we can do it. Now I'm going to click on next. If I want to change my installation and data folder, I can choose from here. In production environment, I always prefer to use a different folder than C drive because all your files will be stored over here though they will be in encrypted format but they will be stored at this location that's always preferred to change it from c drive just in case if system crashes or something happens your file will stay over there i'm going to click on next file system azure blob storage i can connect it to next now over here you see it is giving me credentials for my sysadmin and for my move it uh, service account this account would be created to run the service uh, but again you can change this later on from services uh, but this is the account which would be created and the sysadmin account is for your web portal okay so i'm going to click on next because i'm not going to change any password over here later on i'll be able to change these passwords so you have possibility to use existing IS website if you already have created, but because I didn't create anything, so I'm going to create new IS website. So it will automatically install the required roles and uh, features which are needed from server administration side.
this would be my URL for this particular server. So I have possibility to change it, uh, keep it local host or change it to something, but I would keep it over here as local host and later on in settings, we'll be able to change it. So you can provide your email server details over here. Um, so basically I'm going to put them over here. Uh, anyways, this is something which we can check later. You can create the certificate over here or you can use the existing certificate if you have PFX or something. But I'm going to use for now, uh, create the temporary certificate and then later we, we can see how we can change the certificate in next videos maybe. I'm going to click on next. Over here as I told you, it will allow me to save the credential file. So I'm going to save this file over here. And then we just need to wait for this installation to complete. If you do not have any problems, this installation should automatically be completed in like four or five minutes, or maybe depending on your system resources, it might take a little longer or lesser, but it needs little time to get it installed. Of course, uh, with the power of uh, editing, I'm going to skip this wait time and you will not see a uh, waiting time over here and you will just see the last uh, step or the next step which is going to come after the, these uh, things are completed. So as you can see now the installation is completed. So all the required components are installed. You have possibility to configure mover transfer with the configuration utility. But I'm going to click on finish without doing it because mostly it is automatically configured when we have selected all the options. Now this one will help us to test the relay. So you can opt to do not perform an email relay test or you have possibility to perform an email relay test. So I can say test it. You need to make sure all of them are checked and they are passed. Email is not a problem. We, we can of course always work on email part. So but majorly all others should pass based on your license and based on the capabilities what you have. And as you can see now it is installed. Of course, I can make use of the credentials and sign into this. So for installation part, we'll stop over here and then we look into the initial configuration because once we log into it, we need to create an organization because sysadmin is not something you are going to use. You have to create uh, an organization under that. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you liked the video, hit the like button, leave a comment below to let me know what do you feel about this video and till next video, take good care of yourself. Bye.